This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I have been waiting so long for you. Listen, I don't know if all of you guys were around back in the day, so long ago, 2016, 2017, when everyone was vlogging. I didn't wanna vlog with a huge camera, so I became obsessed with the Sony RX100s. Now, those are more photo focused, but they still took great video. Now this, this camera right here is what I've been waiting since then. You see, the ZV-1, that was basically a better RX100, but focused on vlogging and had vlogging-esque features. But this is the ZV-1 Mark II. Okay, if you're new around here, hi, Sarah Dichi rhymes with Peachy here. So Sony has taken a lot of feedback from the original ZV-1 and put it into the new one, ZV-1 Mark II. Like having a wider lens, which just makes sense as a vlogging camera, you know, you don't have to hold it out super far. And also moving the quarter inch tripod thread over here to where when you open up the door for the battery and SD card slot, you don't have to remove the camera off the tripod. So there are many changes to this Mark II, which are fantastic, but there are a couple that aren't so great that kind of have me shaking my head a little bit. We'll, we'll get to those later. But reminder, the ZV line is Sony's consumer friendly compact line of cameras with video first features. Recently, the ZV E1 was released, which is Sony's full frame ZV camera. I have a video on that. I'll put it in the description below. You have the ZV E10, which is the APS-C version, and the ZV1 Mark II, which is the latest one inch type sensor. So you have the same idea across all cameras. You're just getting bigger sensors along the way, um, but this is obviously a fixed lens system and the E10 and the E1 are interchangeable lenses. Since the ZV-1 was the first ZV camera, it's a little bit behind on the basics. So we have updated menus with better touchscreen functionality. You have the cinematic vlog mode, which honestly I don't even touch, but I think for people who are new to cameras, it'll be, it's, it'll be a cool feature. And then you have the new mic that changes according to if someone is talking in front or behind the camera or both. And we still have the features that make this camera more beginner friendly, like the bokeh button that blurs the background if you don't understand how to just lower the F stop, right? And then we have product showcase setting, which auto focuses on a product without having to cover your face. So if I go like this on my FX6, it's prioritizing my face, right? But with a lot of these newer Sony cameras with the product showcase setting, this camera would be in focus. So if I wanted to do it with FX6, I would have to cover my face. You guys probably know about this feature already. I actually brought this camera to Portugal, so I'm excited to show you some actual footage, of course, but let's just very quickly run through the other features. So the fixed lens, you have a 18 to 50 millimeter wide zoom lens. So that's the 35 millimeter equivalent. The Mark I is a 24 to 70 equivalent. So you have a much wider field of view. You can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second and 1080 at 120 frames per second. And now you have S and Q mode. We didn't have that in the ZV-1, but the weird thing about S and Q mode is it's only an auto mode. So you can't manually adjust your f-stop shutter ISO, which is super weird. But if you want to do that, just switch over into the different frame rate modes and just shoot in 1080, 120. A little bit of a bummer. And there's some more quirks like that, which are weird, but whatever. <laughs> it has a built-in three-stop ND filter, which is honestly just the best. When you're outside filming uh, and you still want that professional look, you have a little bit of depth of field. That's already a little bit harder with a one-inch type sensor. Um, so having that ND filter is fantastic. And obviously it's easier to do that with a fixed lens system. You have really fast autofocus, you have human and animal IAF, and then multiple face recognition. What about the ports? You have a mic jack, not a headphone jack. Um, you have micro HDMI, and now you have USB-C, yay! On the first one we had micro USB, and it just, who, who wants micro USB, um, you know, in this day and age? So I'm glad we have USB-C, and then you can also stream via that USB-C, so you don't need like an Elgato cam link to stream anymore. Um, Sony has been putting that in a lot of their newer cameras the past couple years. And then obviously the best part about it is the size. Now this is a vlogging camera that I'm actually gonna bring with me because I can literally fit it in my pocket, throw it in my purse, right? Even though the ZV-E1, the full frame ZV vlogging camera that you can do interchangeable lenses with, it was so tempting. I, I could really buy all Sony cameras under the sun and maybe I still will one day. But this is the ZV camera 
camera that I'm actually gonna buy because I'm actually gonna bring it with me. The ZV-E1 with my big full frame lenses, that's still not something I'll probably bring. And if I would, uh, in those circumstances, I would just bring my a7S III or my FX3, which I already know and love, right? And I don't have to worry about certain things about it. Like it's always gonna deliver, it's super reliable. I'm not saying the ZV-E1 isn't, but that's more of a just like kind of prosumer, consumer uh, body, right? Still cool though. I don't know, maybe I'll get one one day, but I'm excited about this guy right now. I might have actually stick to vlogging if I had this instead of the RX100. Ah, good times. Sony releases so many cameras at this point, you're probably just like, you know, what is the deal? Why are they releasing so many of these vlogging cameras when vlogging is out? Vlogging is so 2017, right? Well, when they say vlogging, it's really just compact cameras that deliver video first features that are, you know, a step above maybe filming with your phone, capturing those family moments or when you're traveling. Those are really the two biggest things that I would use them for. And when I'm not worrying about bringing my big cameras that I use for work, that I use for my job, right? So let's actually take a trip. That might be fun. But before that, Squarespace, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is always adding so many features. And guys, the end of last year was a huge, huge update and it made me actually redesign my own website. Uh, I'm gonna reveal it next month, but here's a little sneak peek. So excited, doesn't it look so good? So it's not 100% done yet, but it's gonna go live very soon. And what made me wanna redesign it is their new Fluid Engine. They introduced the Fluid Engine at the end of last year and it changes everything. You can use one of their beautiful templates to get started on your website, or you can go with the Fluid Engine, which is essentially a drag and drop website builder where you can put photos, different blocks, uh, email newsletter uh, blurbs, anything, wherever you want on the website. Website. So building a website on Squarespace is now 100% customizable. And you can adjust things on how it'll look based on if someone's viewing your website on a desktop, a phone, a tablet, the sky is the limit now. And Squarespace has always had amazing third-party extensions that help take your website to the next level. If you're selling physical goods, digital goods, anything under the sun. I just opened up a Printful store that integrates into my Squarespace uh, website for merch. It's just, there's so many things. And now I'm finding so many more fun things. Like there's this plugin that changes the cursor to a peach emoji. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm very excited for the saradici.com 2.0, all on Squarespace. So whether you need to do scheduling for a space rental, or maybe you're a creative and you wanna show off your portfolio to clients, or you wanna start kind of a Patreon-like community, but on your website, sell physical goods, sell digital products, you can do it all with Squarespace. So today is the day, go to squarespace.com for a free trial, or go to squarespace.com slash Saradici, that's me, for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Okay, let's head to Portugal with the ZV-1 Mark II. Had something to say? Something I didn't realize about Lisbon before I was here is it's very hilly. We usually like to ride the scooters and the bikes everywhere, but not that easy here. Staring at me. Dude, you want me Why? to beat him up? Cheese, 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 cheese. Cheese tacos. Cheese tacos. on location for actually the reason why I am in Lisbon, but I can't show you anything right now. Oh wow. Okay, so the background's gonna be a little bit overexposed because I wanna prioritize my face, but on the left we have the ZV-1, on the right we have the ZV-1 Mark II. This is so much wider. I'm holding it at full arm's length, and honestly, I don't even need to hold this at full, full arm's length. This is so much wider, obviously so much better for vlogging. Honestly, instant buy, instant buy. I. I was gonna buy the ZV-E1 just cause I have a weakness for Sony cameras, but I think this is the first like proper um, vlogging camera I will
will give my money to. One of my favorite features of the ZV line of cameras is this soft skin effect. Now we had this back in the ZV1, but of course it is in the ZV1 Mark II. So this is normal. Uh, this is no soft skin effect. We're gonna move it to low. So this is with the setting on low. It'll give you a little bit of a glow, I feel like. Just smooth you out a little bit. Let's now go to medium. Now this is if you want uh, the effect to be a little bit more aggressive. So if I wasn't wearing makeup, I would definitely throw this on. Smooth me out a bit, right? And then we'll go to high. So this is soft skin effect on high. And yeah, you know, looking great, feeling myself, but I feel like it's a little too blurry. Like I feel like you start feeling like you're in a K-drama or something. Probably use the, the low or medium setting or when I'm wearing makeup I usually just keep it off because it does kind of just soften things right but the magic to it is it's only gonna be softening your face it won't uh, you know soften like leaves or any of your background um, that's just the natural depth of field okay so right now we have the ZV1 mark 2 on top of the ZV1 so you can see the difference you know we got the 18 to 50 mil lens up top and the 24 to 70 on the bottom so you can see how much wider the mark 2 is on the top. And I also have this in the standard picture profile. Uh, something that is annoying about the first ZV-1 is it didn't have uh, the nice like neutral profile. It just has standard, vivid, some other ones. Now you did have picture profiles that enable the S-Log3 and stuff like that. Um, oh wow, on the ZV-1 I'm already getting a uh, overheating situation. This is something I have been noticing is the ZV-1 gets way hotter, way quicker. I'm filming a 4K24 with the low setting on the smooth skin. I've been recording for three minutes and 46 seconds and we're getting the high temp logo. Let me see if I can uh, reset that. Okay, not to confuse you, but now I have the ZV-1 Mark II on the bottom and the ZV-1 on the top, just so the ZV-1 has more outlets to cool off. And some of these basic things that I didn't even think about with the ZV-1 being two or three years old now, the old menu system, it sucks. As I'm back into it, I'm like, oh, this new menu system might be worth it alone almost. Another great thing about the new menu system is there are a lot of buttons that you can touch on the screen. So you can swipe this way to get them on the screen and swipe out to get them off of the screen. That allows you to have a more clean field of view of your image and then all the other settings are on the top and the bottom of the black bar. On the ZV-1, they're kind of just like all over your image and it's kind of messy. But the biggest thing that's really nice is to have a touch record button on the uh, display. That actually comes in handy more than you think. I really like that you have the new creative look. So you have that neutral profile in the ZV-1 Mark II. You do not have that in Mark 1. Uh, so with the Mark 1, I usually just have it in standard and I'll lower the sharpness. But here on the ZV-1 Mark 2, the new footage that you've been seeing has been neutral because the standard I'm just not the biggest fan of. And right out of the box, it comes really over sharpened. So even in the neutral setting, I went from four sharpness to two. I think that'll be a good sweet spot, but I might lower it even more. But the thing that is just a little bit annoying, and it's my understanding that this is a limitation of the wider focal length, is the fact that we don't have standard steady shot anymore. This is something that we had in the uh, ZV-1 where you get a little bit of image stabilization, but it doesn't crop where active image stabilization has to crop in to really do more of that extra work. So on the ZV-1 Mark II, it's either no stabilization at all or active stabilization where it crops in. So you don't have that standard um, crop. And as I was like out and about vlogging, you're gonna wanna have active image stabilization turned on at all times, or you're gonna get that just not great looking, I wouldn't say like jello effect, it, it just, it, just the shaky effect when you're out walking with it turned off. Uh, looking back at some of that footage, I was just like, ooh, this does not look good. It's similar to what you would get with the ZV-1F, the even cheaper um, ZV vlogging camera. So I'm actually gonna turn on active image stabilization on now with the ZV-1 Mark II to look at the uh, equivalent uh, field of view. Cause even though this is wide and it's great that it's so much wider, you're not gonna be using it at this focal length a lot of the time because this is with the image stable turned off. Okay, so the top angle, we got the ZV-1, and then the bottom angle is the ZV-1 Mark II uh, with active image stabilization turned on. So now you can see that that wider focal length ah, actually isn't that much wider 
I mean, you still like look at the sides, you still get a little bit more width, but it's not as extreme as you would like with active stabilization, which is honestly kind of a bummer because that was like, you know, main reason why I was so excited for this camera. Maybe that's why they haven't brought a wider angle to these cameras, but I don't know. I believe in you, Sony. Is there any way possible we can get a little bit of image stabilization without cropping in? Just a little bit. Oh, and another just major bummer is there's no high frame rate mode. That was one of the coolest parts about the RX100 that I really enjoyed. It was also in the ZV-1, is you're able to shoot in high frame rate mode where it was a little bit less resolution than 1080, um, but you got up to 480 frames per second, even 960 frames per second. Of course, the image degrades a lot, but uh, that just isn't in the ZV-1 Mark II. I don't know why. I asked, but it's just, it's just not in there. And so I'm starting to be like, huh, this is an upgrade, but some things aren't there. They've added some, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and the ZV-1 is already overheating again. Okay, I will say the ZV-1 Mark II. No, I have not suffered any overheating as we're outside in the very hot Lisbon, but the ZV-1 is struggling and we're inside right now. So that's good news, huh? Okay, back from Portugal. And you know, this is a really great, camera. And when I was filming with it next to the Mark one, it was nice to see that this just did not overheat, which I never even thought was a problem with the ZV one. But when you start filming long clips for YouTube, like when you have a 10 minute talking clip for YouTube, that's where you're really going to notice that. And I think with the ZV one, I was just filming very quick, like travel clips or family things. So I never really noticed. So that's good to see. The skin smooth feature is always great. However, I would say if we're really going there, uh, maybe Sony incorporate the neck, you know, I think it was I Justine who was talking to me about this. She's like, it doesn't really make sense when you're all smooth up here, but then the neck isn't smooth at all. So, hey, I say if we're going to go for it, let's just go. Let's just go for it, Sony. Maybe uh, input that into your the AI algorithm or however that calculates things. The audio is really, really great. And someone again who used the RX 100s for so long, which were photo first point and shoots, the audio from that camera was always so bad. So yes, you have a mic jack here, um, but again, I want things to be portable. So having a internal mic that's actually good is amazing. Oh, that's what I've needed. I will say we haven't had a big frame rate bump in a while. I would love to see 4K60 in here, or maybe just like 4K60 in S and Q mode. So people wouldn't use it for long stints. So it wouldn't overheat being like, oh, I want to get some slow-mo button 4K and just not having that switching back to 1080. That's kind of, that's kind of weird to do because I'm just so used to 4K60 being normal with my A7S III, you know? And like I said, this blends in really well with my other Sony cameras. I think ultimately that has to be a decision that you make. When you're out and about, maybe you have a nice photo camera, uh, but it's just easier for you to capture video moments on your phone. Phones have gotten so great. And with computational photography and things like smart HDR with the iPhone video, a lot of the times it's gonna expose your video really, really well. And I think these vlogging cameras shine a lot of the time when you know how to use them, when you can dial in the settings on your own. And a lot of people who uh, I guess Sony is marketing to for these, they're gonna put everything in auto mode anyway ways and you might just uh, come out with like a very video like image. And at the end of the day, maybe those people will be fine just like taking video with their phone and not really even worrying about this. So for me, I love having a camera like this because I can dial things in and it mixes well with my other cameras. When I'm out traveling, I'll do one or two things. I either have like a nice vlogging camera and I'll shoot photos with my phone or vice versa. I'll have like my Leica Q2 and then I'll just shoot video here and there with my phone. Okay. So anyways, let me know what you thought about this video. And I actually never put links for these cameras in the description below because I feel like ah, you're gonna go to BNH or Amazon, but I'm gonna put my affiliate link in the description below because I think Sony is now selling cameras directly from their website. And right next to that link is gonna be my Squarespace link. Hey, it is time to make a beautiful website. If you're a creative, if you're running a hair salon, if you're running your own restaurant, Squarespace is the place to you to build a beautiful website. It is so easy to get something that looks so good. So check out my link in the description below. And until next time, everyone, stay peachy. Okay, bye.